thank you all for coming. Uh, don't be afraid to turn your cameras on. Um, more than happy to see you all. And please make sure your mics are on mute and we'll be going through the webinar on cash flow and growth strategies for sustainable growth in 2021. So uh, the webinar will be presented by Charthouse in collaboration with Action Coach and Will Roik. Uh, if you'd like to say hi, Will. Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome. So assume you're all here because you're interested in growing your business and understanding the cash flow of your business. So there will be a Q&A at the end. So pop your questions into the chat box and we'll do our best to answer any questions that you may have. So if I'd like to begin with introducing everyone from Charterhouse, I'd like to welcome David and Raj, our managing directors, and Owen, our marketing manager, who will be firing the questions at us in the Q&A. So who am I? I'm Jem, like the diamond, youngest associate director at Charterhouse Accountants, led the transformation to cloud accounting and onboarded our first digital tax clients and took Charterhouse to platinum cloud accounting status with now over 700 clients on cloud accounting software. Uh, will works with Action Coach, and I will hand over to Will, who will guide us through the five ways model to profit growth. I will then go through the biggest challenges businesses face with cash flow management before a Q&A at the end. So without further ado, I will hand over to Will. So um, thanks again, Jem, and welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for investing your time with us this morning. Uh, today is really all about looking at a different way of creating exponential business growth and some of the elements that are fundamental to its safety and sustainability. Uh, before we go there, um, on the screen in front of you, there are a couple of questions, the first of which, why did you go into business in the first place? Was it for a better life? What, what, what was it for? And the, the second question, have you got there yet? Now, the reason those questions are there are simply for the fact that um, most business owners go into business and they have great intentions of what they want to achieve for themselves from doing so. Very quickly, it's often the case that uh, business owners get bogged down with the day-to-day -day and firefighting and they lose sight of the fact why they went into business in the first place. So if you've still got your eye on the goal, then well done to you. If you haven't, then perhaps it's time to start thinking about why you got into business in the first place. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive straight into the heart of today's session on what a serious focus on business growth can do for you. And I want to introduce you at this stage to the five ways model to profit growth. Um, and we're gonna run through this fairly quickly, but as Sir Jem said, there'll be questions uh, at the end. So please do put them in the chat box. So here, here we go then. Um, the overwhelming thought with business owners um, when it comes to uh, increasing profit is sales. How do we get more sales? Well, of course, um, the first port of call is the number of leads or inquiries into the business that we can generate. Um, coupled with that is how effective we are at turning those inquiries into sales, which means we have a number of customers. Now, once we have customers, um, our turnover is really dependent on the average number of times we can get those customers coming back to us and the average value of each and every one of those sales that we can make. See, that sort of determines our turnover. And finally, our profit margin, our net percentage profit margin, will determine our net profit. Now, there were three numbers or three items there in red, and that's customers, turnover, and profits. And there are two good reasons for these numbers being in red. Firstly, these are the numbers that most business owners focus on, and quite rightly too, because they are important factors of business. The number of customers we have, the turnover we can generate, and the profit, the money that's left in our pocket at the end of the period. Um, however, the second reason for these numbers being in red is because they are all results. These items aren't directly influenceable. Instead, we need to focus on the five numbers that I've just run through. So we're gonna show you how this works. So first of all, the number of leads we can generate, the number of inquiries we can generate, and the conversion rate, how good we are at converting those leads into customers, determines the number of customers we have. So they're the driving force behind the customers that we have. Uh, the number of transactions that we can uh, influence our customers to make and the average value of each and every one of those transactions 
determines what our turnover is. So they are the driving force behind what our turnover is. And then finally, um, our net percentage profit margin, or however you want to look at it, our margin determines our profit. So if we're going to turn this into numbers to, to give you an idea of what it looks like, we'll use the example of a small business. Um, and this small business is generating 4,000 leads a year, say. Their conversion rate is 25%, which means, of course, they have 1,000 customers. Now, if each one of their customers buys on average from them twice a year, and every time they buy from them, they spend £100, then their turnover will be £200,000. Is everyone with me at this stage? Yes. Okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. Okay, so if this company's profit margin is 25%, then their net profit is £50,000, okay? Now, let's look at each one of these items in turn and what it takes to influence each one. So the first of them, number of leads. Now, the number of leads you can generate in your business obviously requires a marketing focus. The objective here is to get new qualified problem clients into your products and services. Now, there are, um, as far as we know, 84 different ways to improve lead generation. Uh, chiefly among them, um, first and foremost, testing and measuring everything that you're doing so that you can make objective decisions going forward. If you don't have the information to determine whether what you're doing is successful or not, then you can't hope to make better decisions going forward. Of course, if you're going to uh, be doing marketing, you want to increase the number of customers in your business, then you do need to have a marketing plan, um, a marketing plan that preferably covers the broad categories of digital, direct, and social. Um, because some of this uh, marketing, digital marketing for argument's sake, can be term, can be viewed as longer term, depending on the type of business you're in. Uh, direct marketing is obviously more short term. Uh, and social, when we talk about social, I don't mean social media, that's covered under digital. I do, of course, mean uh, social interaction, face-to-face, -face, having conversations. Um, creating strategic alliances is another way of um, creating synergistic opportunities for both you and your strategic partner. So these are just a handful of ways that, um, that you can um, look at increasing the number of leads in your business. But it's all about marketing. For the, mo for the most part, it's all about having a consistent marketing plan, which is measured to determine what the results are and make better decisions moving forward. Now, once you're generating inquiries, uh, the next number of focus is your conversion rate. Now, what does that mean? That means a sales focus, a focus on sales. Now, the objective here is to turn your prospects into paying clients. If we consider the example that I just went through, uh, that small business is generating 4,000 leads a year and ending up with only 1,000 customers. Um, it means they're working very hard to generate inquiries and they're throwing three quarters of those inquiries down the drain. Um, so how do we get better? How do we get better at conversion rate? Uh, chiefly, uh, chiefly among the ways, and there are 83 different ways to improve your conversion rate, um, is having a clearly defined customer onboarding process with appropriate scripting. Um, gone are the days of aggressive selling. Um, born are the days of helping our customers to solve their problems. Um, so having an appropriate uh, sales process or onboarding process, which identifies exactly what your client's need is or what your prospect's need is, and filling that need with the appropriate product or service, service is the way to go forward. Um, other things um, such as using service guarantees, um, setting targets, um, meeting goals and such like are key to um, uh, improving conversion rates. Now, once we've got our customers, um, the focus turns to how many times we can serve them. And this is, of course, a CRM focus. What we mean by that is a customer relationship management focus. The objective here is to keep your clients coming back more and more often. Um, so how can you remain at the forefront of your customer's mind when they come around to buying your product or service again? Um, how can you influence the frequency with which they require your product or service? Um, things like newsletters, uh, things like promotional calendars, um, Asking them to come back, the simple, simplest of strategies, but uh, very, very effective. Um, having a product service customer matrix. And, and, you know, if you're a product company that has a product line of maybe 100, 150 items, how many of your customers are buying just one or two of those lines? Um, is their mileage in 
uh, making sure that your client base understands everything that you do. So it's really about maintaining those relationships with your current clients and inducing them to come back to um, when they need your product or service again, making sure that they come back to you as much as possible. Now, average value of sale. Um, the focus here is on market positioning and USP. Um, the, 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 the chief message here is stop discounting. As a small business, it's highly unlikely. There are one or two exceptions, but it is un un highly unlikely that you can afford to adopt a cost leadership model. They tend to be the preserve of large businesses that have adopted that model and they have economies of scale. Uh, rather, the other way to um, influence and, and your value of sale is to add more value. Um, so target your market, um, not on a, scanner, uh, on a scatter done approach um, and try and capture every, every um, customer in the market, but identify segmenting your market and filling that market with a value-based proposition where the, the market is prepared to pay a little bit more for the right product or the right service. Um, <clears throat> upselling, cross-selling, uh, providing a checklist of services, um, being that problem solver that we spoke about and not a salesman is more likely to increase your average value of sale um, and get your customers coming back and being prepared to pay a little bit more for a better value product or service. Now, the, the final thing that's up there, which we haven't really spoken about is USP and we can't really deep dive into that today because it's a big, big uh, subject. But what is your point of uniqueness in your marketplace? What makes you different? And, and you know, what, what do you have in your business that is different to everyone else, but is attractive to your client base, attractive to your target market? Um, we can talk for ages about USP and different types of USP, but we haven't got time to do that here. Happy to talk about it at some point in the future. Now, the final number, uh, profit margins. Um, now, this is a focus on value, efficiency, and systemization. There are broadly two ways to do this. Um, you can either increase your prices or you can reduce your costs. However, within that, there are a range of strategies and concepts and, and, and uh, processes that you can go through to make sure that cost reduction is um, maximized and price is maximized. So we've talked about um, providing value. Um, what about efficiency and systemization? Well, you know, adopting certain KPIs which are appropriate for certain businesses, such as Infotis, which is in full on time in spec. So reducing the amount of rework you do, for argument's sake, will provide more capacity in your business to do more work. It will cost you less because you're not sending your staff out to do work more than once. Um, understanding what your different margins are and focusing on how you can improve them. Um, selling more high margin goods. So if you're if you're a seller of products and, and you know, you've got a big product line, some of which are um, you know, not really making you much money and some of which are making you good profits, then how does your marketing adjust to make sure that you're focused on selling high margin goods um, and stop selling or doing unprofitable work? And you'll be surprised in terms of um, some of the uh, things I've seen in the past where um, businesses have gone through this process of ramping up uh, leads, ramping up business only to find that the more they sell, the more money they lose because they're selling items of service or product, which is actually costing them money to provide. So stop doing that stuff, understand what your margins are and sell what is making you money. Okay, so back to the numbers. And here is our business. Now we're gonna just look at what would happen if we could focus on just a 10% increase across these numbers. Um, and we can see it's quite, quite easily that um, if we increased our month, number of leads generated by 10%, we'd have 4,400 leads. Now, if we manage to increase our conversion rate by 10%, that's 10% on top, not 10% added, that goes to 27.5%. And that means that we end up with another 210 customers. So influencing each of those two numbers by 10% almost increases our, our customer base by a quarter. Now, if on top of that, we have strategies um, that we've discussed in place to influence our number of transactions up by 10%, that's only a 2.2, from 2 to 2.2. And then the average sale is £110. Our turnover goes to 292.820. And finally, if we can influence our profit margin 
by 10%, that's again 27.5%, then our net profit becomes £80,525. Okay, what does that mean? That means a 46% increase in revenue and a 61% increase in profits. Now, you can cut this uh, model any way you wish. You can add your own numbers to it. You can add any numbers to it. If you manage a 10% increase across the board, you will achieve a 46% increase in your revenue and a 61% increase in your profits. Now, that is what we call exponential growth. The reality is, is that um, if a focus, a consistent focus is adopted, then there may be some numbers where certain businesses can't get to 10%. There'll be other numbers, in my experience, where they can surpass 50, 60, or even 70%. But 10% across the board is, is deemed fairly conservative and will achieve the results that we've just, we've just described. What about the long-term view? So a short-term focus, we've been focusing on a year, um, a short-term focus strategy grows profits, a long-term view creates wealth. So this is what would happen if you focused on this model over a five-year period. And this is the same business that we've been speaking about. Um, the only difference I've made here is I've um, focused on a 10% year-on-year increase on the first four numbers and just a 5% increase in net profit margin. The reason for that is, as we said, it can be harder for smaller businesses to influence profit margin, um, at least in the earlier years. However, as businesses grow, there is every chance that they can uh, um, benefit from some economies of scale, which means that um, in my experience, if it's leveraged the right way, um, a 5% increase across the five year period is reasonably conservative. And we can see here that in the first few years, um, we are indeed adding profit to the bottom line. But when we get to year three and onwards, we start adding serious wealth to the business in terms of uh, a ramping up of net, net uh, profit. And in, in fact, um, an increase in revenue here of um, over six times over the five year period. Okay. Um, now, the question I can hear you all asking is well, you know, if it were that easy, um, why isn't everyone doing this? And there are, of course, considerations to bear in mind. And I'm just going to take you through a few of those before I hand you back to Jem to talk about cash flow. So the first of those, planning and consistency. Um, it is imperative that you plan the future growth of your business. If you don't know where you want to be in five years time, you're probably already there. It takes consistency. Um, having a half-hearted attempt at this won't get you anywhere. Having a strong focus on achieving that outcome, which goes back to the question I asked you when we first started about knowing where you're going, um, consistency is key. Having that KPI dashboard in place, having the test and measure in place, collecting that data so that you can make objective decisions about your growth in the future, um, you're not gonna grow without it other than by sheer luck. And, um, you know, we often say in the business, hope is not a strategy. Mindset. Being the right person for this um, is often understated, but very, very important. And we're going to run through that in just a second. And then finally, and of course, where I'll hand you, hand you back to Jem uh, to talk about cash flow. These areas, amongst others, are among the most important parts of making this model work for you. OK, so planning. Um, and it might interest you to know that, that um, uh, a, a piece of research conducted by Harvard Business School in 1986 focused on a cohort of graduates. And 3% of those graduates had written goals. Uh, in the following 10 years, they'd amassed more than 10 times the wealth of the remaining 97% combined. Um, need I say more about the power of planning? Um, the message is clear. Have a plan in place, uh, not a business plan that's thrown in the corner to gather dust, but an action plan which focuses you on taking the right actions in your business to improve your growth. Um, the, the message is clear. Testing and measuring. Um, again, uh, build yourself a business dashboard. Have that dashboard in place, which collects not just the five numbers of the five ways model, but numbers across the business in every function of the business. So sales, marketing, operations, HR, finance, having those KPIs in place so that you can make sure that every area of the business, every function of the business is efficient. 
being becoming world class at this will uh, alone, if you did nothing else, would uh, focus you on growing your business and you would achieve results. Of course, getting all this into place does mean that you have to be the right person. Um, the way you think about business is key here. So we've often known, we, we, we've always known that the way you think determines how you feel. Now, the feelings you have determine the actions you take. The actions you take desert, determine your results and your results will be uh, evident in your bank balance at the end of the day. Okay. And finally, uh, cash flow. Um, it's said that uh, over, 10 percent, over 10 years, um, nearly 90% of businesses go bust. Um, mo many of those businesses are viable businesses. They just run out of cash. And at this point, I'm going to pass you back to Jem, who's going to run you through the importance of cash flow and how best to achieve uh, decent cash flow management. So back to you, Jem. Can you take over from there? Thank you very much, Will. That was very insightful. I think everyone learned quite a bit there. So leading on from what Will said there is cash flow has a big impact on businesses. So what's the biggest challenge with the cash flow management in your business? So do share in the chat box your biggest difficulties that you're facing at the moment with your cash flow of your business. So we're always in constant dialogue with our clients. And these are the kind of things that they talk about is that they can't they don't know where they stand at this moment. They've got money in the bank, but they don't see that next week they've got £50,000 coming out for VAT. So the challenges that you've got with cash flow forecasting is getting challenged with getting the customers to pay on time. Do you know what you need to get additional funding? These are the kind of aspects that they struggle with. So do you know when you're, you have the finances to buy that new machinery that's going to be able to get you that 10% extra uh, revenue? So have you got that in financial information at your fingertips to help you make those informed decisions about running your business that Will was talking about? How is having a business coach like Will going to help you? But if you don't have that financial information in the first place, it's very difficult to start making, to plan and make decisions. So what will you get from today is keeping close control of your cash flow using any digital device, including smartphones, uh, how you will get real-time information about business performances, again, using the dashboard that Will was talking about, and the applications that will support cash generation in your business. So let's get on with that. So benefits of cloud accounting. Before we can get into the cash flow side and getting that information in the first place, you need to go, we need to take a step back and start from the beginning. So cloud accounting has been able to get before we so the bigger picture of the benefits will resonate with some of you and not with the others but the main thing with the cloud accounting is the time so on average 89 hours per year are saved per client by accountants so the clients are not the accountants aren't spending as much time doing the bookkeeping but they're able to provide more advisory services to their clients and help you grow your business again no paperwork how many times have you lost an invoice in your account and has said to you, we cannot claim the VAT on that or Where, where's your expenses? We can't claim that without physical proof. That's the thing of the past because you just take a picture and there's your invoices there. It's on the system there forever. Again, cash flow forecasting. When can I buy that new machinery to make me 10% more efficient? Which, what is the impact on cash if I increase my prices by 5%? These are the kind of things that you're able to have at your fingertip with cloud accounting. Real-time information. So know your accounting status at any point in time with that dashboard. So having that information there on your smartphone that you can see, I have this much cash, this is my profit, these are my VAT liability, this is my corporation tax, this is my wage bill. You can see all of this information. And again, if, your account, if you have any queries, you can call your accountant up and you're both looking at exactly the same data at the same time and able to talk openly. Immediate management accounts for loan applications. In the current climate, this is a very important matter where people are making loan applications, but they don't have the financial information to be able to prov uh, provide information to the loan companies. So again, automated reports ready for any loan application. Review profitability of your different revenue streams. So again, 
if you have got a hundred different production lines, which one's profitable, which one's not, you're able to identify that quite easily. Proactive advice from your accountant and business coach, because you've got, they've got the information at their fingertips as well to be able to provide you with that advice. Reduction of debtors days. Again, the key to keeping your cash positive is to make sure that you're getting paid on time every time. Yeah. So an example, one of our clients was a plumber and or is a plumber and he's owed over 80 days worth. He's, he would raise the invoice and wouldn't get paid for over 80 days. That's not ideal for any business taking three months almost to get paid for work that you've already completed. He was doing the work, going home, writing out the invoice on a piece of paper, sending it to the client a couple of days later. By the time someone gets it in the post, goes online and makes the payment, it takes a long time. So we moved him on to zero. We got him automated with the processes, invoice reminders, uh, pay now buttons on his invoices, debt collection automatically, and it reduced his debt days down to around 10 to 15 days. So that's a massive difference in the cash flow. And that's the kind of advice you can get with this. So moving on to the reasons we're all here today, how to maximize your cash flow. So the solution, again, one of the quickest and easiest ways to improve your cash flow is to set up a pay now button on all your invoices. So many of you may or may not know this, the systems do that. We're a type of accountants that advise our clients in the best way to maximize their cash flow. So having a pay now button here, allows your customers to pay you directly from your invoices without the hassle of going into their bank, finding your bank details, copy and paste. Oh no, it took too long to log back in. What's your customer? You want your customer to find the payment process as simple and stress-free as possible. So think about when you pay Amazon, it's just swipe. And I mean, it's not the best thing because you get, carried away and you keep spending money quite easily. But think about how that makes you feel as a customer about your company, how it's a genuinely enjoyable experience. Oh, I'll just pay for it because it's so easy. So with a pay now button, you can set up many different payment options such as credit card, PayPal, direct debit. You can choose the best way which suits you and your customers. What we found with our customers is that the pay now button has had a really positive impact on their debtors days reducing the time it takes uh, to receive payments from the, from the day raising the invoice from 82 days to around 32 days. Imagine what you could do with an extra 50 days worth of cash in your bank. These, then there's those who go the extra step and have added the go cardless or Stripe to these customers to see further reduction to 12 days. So here's an example of what the pay now button will look like on your invoice, simple and easy. It's just there, click and you go through the process. So data directly from zero shows that with a payment service is such as Stripe or Ango Cardless, you get paid up to twice as fast as you can be seen by the diagram there. So again, you just wanna get paid as quickly as possible. Invoice payment services here, you can see there's lots of different options. You've got WorldPay, you've got PayPal. Again, Go Cardless and Stripe are the ones that we work with quite well and a lot of our clients are on those uh, providers at the moment. So payment services such as Go Cardless offer simple ways to collect debt owed to you without the need for those awkward conversations. You know, you just set it up once and through the power of direct debit, all further invoices are collected within the payment terms of the invoice. So it means less hassle for you and your customers. No one needs to worry if the invoice has been paid. This is all automated with notifications being sent uh, to your customers and advising them the amount will be coming out of their bank on the due date. This seamlessly works with your zero, allowing you to reconcile all of your invoices at the click of a button. So you raise your invoice, send it, it all comes through on Go Cardless. They see the information, they go collect the money from your customer and into your bank account. Hassle free, nice and easy. So with that, cash flow. So cash flow forecasting, this is something that many of our clients have been asking for, and it's a main pain point for a lot of our customers. So not knowing how much cash they'll have at the end of the month to pay wages, to pay VAT, or even rent. 
So Fluidly is an application that we work with, which links with your live data on your Xero software and produces cash flow forecasts based on payments and receivable trends. So this tool helps us to advise our clients on planning those big cash expenditures or even those tiny little ones. So seeing the revenue streams is bringing in the cash and which ones are draining the cash. So we're able to identify which clients are paying on time and which ones are generally late payers. So you can see, okay, I raised this invoice to this customer. He doesn't pay until two weeks after the payment date. So that's someone that you're gonna to want to put on go cardless. And that's how you identify those ones earlier. Allowing you to plan for when you're gonna have those funds available to use in your business. So using this tool, we're able to advise our clients on planning the future growth of their business. And Will we use, uses some of these tools to be able to talk about how they can plan growth. So here's an example of a 12 month forecast, which we can advise on those difficult business decisions with the help of Will, of course. Should I buy this new piece of machinery? Should I increase my price by 10%? We're able to forecast the impact on cash using the information from your zero, which feeds into Fluidly seamlessly. If we can see that cash is drying up, we can then make recommendations on how to inject cash into the business to make those important steps to grow your business. Now, Zero has identified this as an issue for SMEs and has introduced their own short-term cash flow. Oh, sorry, short-term cash flow forecast. This is free within Zero for all Zero customers. So, know your upcoming cash flow to make better decisions. Again, this is a great tool to see the cash flow trends. If, but this is only a short period. I believe it's only three months. Fluidly goes up to twelve months. Again. Invoice reminders, this is another great way to get the cash in early on. So what's the main pain point? If you haven't got a client on direct debit, if you haven't got them uh, with invoice reminders is what where you can set automatic reminders to send to your clients. So you don't have to pay someone to sit there on the phone calling up, oh, you haven't paid today. You haven't paid, you was due to pay. When are you gonna pay? These are having, those are awkward conversations. No one wants to have them. So invoice reminders are automatic. As soon as you can set the rules and parameters, however you see fit. And these are personalized messages. So if you know how you work with some clients, you can set the email to however you see fit. And this is all automatically done once set up. What have we learned today? How to make your accounts work for us how cloud accounting can improve cash flow, removing those uncomfortable conversations with customers when chasing debt. So how can we help you? Chart House and Action Coach are here today to offer a complimentary consultation, to review your software and data. And we're offering to all customers today, all uh, members today, 12 months half price, zero subscription. Again, you can contact me, here's my contact details. And we'll be going into a Q&A now where you can ask any questions that you have on our two presentations. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and they all come under one of those three banners. Um, the, the, the point I'm making here is that marketing covers a broad range of category, categories, some of which will take longer to take effect and others which the, the direct strategies for argument's sake are more short term strategies which produce quicker results. Um, but within those categories, the different strategies that you can use like adverts um, and, and you know, PR events, that sort of thing, webinars like this one today, um, we'll come under one of those three categories. Uh, that really depends on the type of business. Um, but yes, um, however you can add value. Um, so for argument's sake, uh, let, let's take the, the um, food retailing industry um, as an example. Um, we had the large four supermarkets, the big four supermarkets who were largely on their own, so serving the whole of the market. 
Then along comes Lidl and Aldi, who were the cost leadership, who adopted a cost leadership model uh, characterized by lower real estate and um, lower, lower um, infrastructure costs and importing um, European brands rather than UK based premium brands. Um, they focus their efforts on the price conscious customer. And the big four supermarkets lost out big time because they weren't prepared for that. At the same time, we had Marks and Spencer's Food, who at the same period enjoyed 26 quarters of growth based on targeting value based proposition customers. So, customers that wanted a perceived better quality and who were prepared to pay for it. So, when you're looking at your own business, think about um, what it is that you do differently and how you can add value. But, but trust me, when it comes to cost leadership, there is only ever one cost leader at a time, and that's the cheapest in the market at that point. And those businesses that adopt cost leadership models are fighting each other for market share of the same customer. So it, it's, it, you know, it would take a little bit more of an investigation, but uh, again, I'm happy to, following on from this, provide anyone with a complimentary session where we can look into their point of interest and drill down on that and identify exactly what that means to them. I hope that helps. Okay, so this really depends on, on what your setup is. Again, if you have a state-of-the-art CRM um, uh, system, that may well categorize where your leads are coming from you. Um, do you have to record the data? Yes, absolutely, 100%. Um, you can't make an objective decision about the growth of your business unless you know what's going on, unless you know what the results of your activities are. Um, you know, some I have clients that do this with a simple spreadsheet. They, at the end of each day, they look at their day, what inquiries have we had? Um, even in the case of a bakery who have got multiple customers on a daily basis, uh, are doing this on a paper tick chart. Every time a customer walks through the door, they tick it. So they know how many customers are coming in. Now, if you're marketing across a, 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 a range of different marketing uh, channels, then yes, it's a good idea to um, identify the source of those inquiries. Because if you have a marketing budget, um, and, and I have had a, a client in the past with a very large marketing budget who discovered that 30% of his budget was being wasted because he wasn't generating any inquiries. Uh, the beauty of that information is that you can stop spending that money or you can divert that budget into those strategies that are working to generate even more inquiries. So yeah, um, absolutely you have to record the information and uh, absolutely you should be um, recording the information in terms of the source of the inquiry. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so again, yeah, it's not for the faint-hearted, um, but I'll ask you one question. Um, why would you want a customer that isn't making you a profit? So um, when you identify that, then, you know, ask yourself the, the, the next question. Can that customer can be converted into a profit-creating um, client? Um, if not, then I see very little point in keeping them. Um, one method of doing this is to uh, rate your customers, uh, put your customers into bands, so into four bands, A, B, C, and D. Now, your A-grade customers will be your um, raving fans. They're the people that are actively going into the world and telling people about you. You've got to use Will, he's fantastic. You've got to uh, use Charterhouse, they're the best accounts you'll ever use. Your B-grade customers are those customers that are um, advocates of your brand. They're raving fans of the brand but they're not gonna go and shout about it unless they're pushed to do so. Uh, your C-grade customers are just your average customer. They could go over either way. They'll buy from you one time, they'll buy from someone else the next. And your D-grade customers are those customers where you're not making money. And if you are making a profit from them, then invariably they're causing you more trouble than they're worth. Um, if you're brave enough, do yourself a favor, round up your D-grade customers and sell them to your comp competition. They'll make you, uh, it'll make you a, 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 a better business going forward and make you more competitive. Um, your C grade customers can either be, um, can either be uh, graduated to B grade or, or, or demoted to D grade. Um, but if we focus on having A and B grade customers, and let's face it, no business is gonna serve every customer in the market and nor should they. 
they should focus on their target market, those people that really, really love what they do. Um, you know, and I know there's more work involved in that, and it's easy for me to say that, but if you position yourself in, the, in your market in that way, then invariably that's what you'll end up with. I think the main point here is that you're providing a excellent service to your customers. They're going to want to pay you because you're doing a good job in the first place. The encouragement part is, I think we'll might have a better input on this bit, but if your customers aren't paying you, then why are you providing a service to a customer who's not paying you in the first instance? You should be, again, would they be downgraded to a D client? But the point is you want to be able to be proactive with your customers and provide them with the support and advice that they need to grow. So if they value that, they should be paying you on time. So first part, yes, that is the whole purpose of the cash flow forecasting model that's with Fluidly specifically. It gives a breakdown of all of the different items that go through cash. And you can identify big expenditures or trends to see where's money going out or what's happened. And these are things that Will can explain to his, uh, to be able to advise, hang on, you're spending too much here. Why? Or this revenue stream seems to have tailed off why what's happened here so definitely that's exactly where the conversations then had in where we advised the clients that look this is where you need to go down and it's yeah definitely being able to identify trends and spot any anomalies that's exactly what the cash flow is there for um so for example if you know that in six months time i'm going to increase fees on this product by five percent you can do that and then that will show you the impact on cash or if I reduce the price by 5%, what's the impact that's going to have? Or if you know that one of your suppliers costs have gone up because of the importing fees that have gone up, what's the impact? That's, what impact is that going to have on your margin? So yes, modeling can be done within the cash flow forecast. I guess it depends on what your overall objective is. You could have one that's got, you can have a pessimistic one, general one that you believe in and optimistic one, and then try and meet in between. I think that's for more advanced levels. If you're at a point where you're comfortable with your cash flow, and you're looking at different impacts on revenue streams. So yeah, I think that, and that is something that we can offer to customers to show that, look, this is your pessimistic cash flow forecast here's your optimistic one and here's kind of where we're at at the moment based on current activities so with regards to fluidly it looks at your historical data live data from your zero and projects it across going forward looking at when customers generally pay looking at trends it is effectively a tr it's trending across so that's going to give you the most general on if everything stays the same, this is what's going to happen going forward. So we can then put in anomalies to say, this is what worst case scenario, this will happen, best case scenario, this will happen and provide different forecasts for that. I'll start with question two, because that's the easy one. We can set you up in any way, depending on your current accounting status if you are already on a cloud on a software we can just convert that data onto zero if you're on manual records we'd usually use your last set of accounts and convert that onto zero so there's various different options but again it's a case by case basis but there is no issue with converting onto zero it's a very seamless exercise that we can do same day to be honest it's uh, after that conversation it's not a difficult process so the cash flow forecast, if they're on cloud software already, it's very easy. We just link it into Fluidly or we use the tools that are already in there. And from there, with conversations with the clients, we can kind of build the cash flow forecast for the future. So again, we're working on historical data, so we don't know the future. So the client will have to advise us on 
what they're expecting to happen within the industry or within their business if they're planning on any mass expenditure then we can build that into it of course we can put tax accruals into the, into the forecast and that's generally automated within the software as well so it looks at your turnover okay these are your vat invoices so you're going to have that expenditure of this and it's filtered into the cash flow forecast for you Uh, yeah, so the answer is um, yes, we do both. Um, everything starts with a, uh, a complimentary session to identify um, the fit and the, um, you know, the, 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 the potential success of, of, of that particular business in terms of the viability of them getting to where they want to go. Um, but we do that with, um, with a couple of one or two complimentary sessions. Um, and then based on um, the information that we find and uh, the, 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 the type of business, um, how quickly they want to go and uh, the size, et cetera, um, we have a range of services that range right from um, a planning club, which is a, a very, very uh, low level where we help them plan the business uh, on a quarterly basis. Um, right through to group coaching um, and on to one-to-one coaching. So the range is very varied. Um, the reason for um, having the investigation up front is to identify what's likely to be best. Um, but at the end of the day, the choice is made by the client. If we, if we assess that there's a good fit between us and we're going to be successful in, in, in our relationship, then um, the choice will be uh, the clients to make. So... If anyone does have any further questions uh, that didn't get answered or if you have any that you haven't put through, don't be afraid to send them to us. We're happy to answer them in the future. Uh, as mentioned, those of you who have joined us today are welcome to your complimentary one hour consultation. That can be that will be with both Will and myself, uh, where we can advise you on enhancing your digitization and to make your finances easier for you and work to grow your business using Will's five ways model. So do get in touch. A reminder, those who sign up will get 50% off their zero subscription for the first year uh, to book a consultation, either book myself with either email myself or Will and we'll arrange a suitable time. Uh, you will also receive an email from me following up the webinar and you can respond with times that suit you. Alternatively, Perry will also be getting in touch with a call following the webinar. Uh, will, any final words of wisdom? Uh, no, uh, just thanks everyone again for joining. I hope you found it useful. And um, as I say, you know, as you said, Jem, um, we're here to help in any way we can. Uh, so, you know, if there's anything that's left unanswered or over the coming days, um, something comes to mind that you would have liked to have asked, then please do get in touch and book that complimentary session. Uh, we'll take you through and, and help to answer any further questions that do arise. And, and, you know, maybe look at how some of this stuff, what it means for your business personally, because I, you know, I, I do really get that, you know, we're talking to a broad, range, a broad range of people and everyone's business is very, very different and unique to them. So, you know, how do these things, that, these concepts that we've discussed, how do they, uh, how are they how are they tailored for an individual business well we can look at that in the complimentary session thank you will and thank you all for joining us today and keep an eye out for our property and tax webinar which will be in mid july i believe so please do, do also let us know if there's any specific topics you'd like us to cover in future webinars and will and i will be working quite closely together in the future so do not hesitate to contact either of us if you would like any sessions in the future Thank you all very much. Bye for now.